Hey there everybody, it's Linnea here for Pink and Main, and today I'm going to be creating five cards with one kit, and this is the new Homespun Christmas card kit from Pink and Main. Now this card kit is not part of the regular subscription. This is a special holiday themed kit. So if you are a kit subscriber, you will need to purchase this kit separately. This is not going to be part of your subscription. As always, these kits are limited edition, and once they're gone, they're gone. So you're definitely going to want to hop on this one. It's an absolutely amazing kit. Let's take a look at what there is. So Pink and Main always has these mesh zipper bags that contain all the contents of the kit. First up, I have this gorgeous little sequin mix. And this has pretty golds and greens and reds. Then there's some white glitter uh, enamel dots perfect for holiday cards. And I love that they're white, so you can color them with your Copic markers if you want, or just leave them white. You're going to get a full paper pack. This is a 6x6 six six paper pack, and it's called Homespun Christmas, just like the card kit. And there are fabulous patterns in here. I absolutely adore this. We're going to look through each of these patterns, and you're going to see the color scheme is amazing. I love this whole paper pack because you can create very traditional Christmas cards with these olivey greens and Christmas reds, but then there's also this lime green, there's this teal color, blue color, kind of a cream, and there's a pink too. So if you want to go lime green and pink and kind of be a little bit non-traditional, you definitely can. I'm loving blue for the holidays too, but if you are kind of traditional, I do love my traditional Christmas colors you have a good mix of everything in here and the patterns are stunning. I, I can't get enough of this whole paper pack. It's absolutely gorgeous. And of course it's gonna come in this little cellophane bag, which I love. So all these papers are loose leaf is the best, that I can, best term that I think to describe them. So you don't have to peel them off of a paper pack or anything, which I love. I love just having a standalone paper. I'm often inspired by a paper or a pattern. And so being able to just hold that in my hands is really helpful to me. You're also going to get a pack of foil cardstock. And this has both silver and gold foil cardstocks in here. And I believe that there are four of each. Yes, four of each of silver and gold foil cardstock papers. So absolutely gorgeous for adding accents, and I'll be using just a little bit of that in today's uh, one of today's projects. You're going to get six pre-cut and scored card bases. These are thick, heavyweight cardstock. I believe that they're the 110-pound ice rink cardstock, and they are already cut in half and then scored in half too. So all you have to do is fold these in half and you have a ready to go card base. Really helpful in a card kit when there's card bases like this. There's this absolutely gorgeous stencil and something that I didn't do in today's projects but that I really want to do in the future. You can absolutely mask off just one of those little strips and you can either have that one strip of the stencil going across your card or you can have that repeating. So like that little snowflake pattern there you can mask that off and just have that cover your card if you want to. Or you can just use the stencil as is, which I did in today's project. And I also love how the patterns on the stencil correspond and match the patterns in the Homespun Christmas paper pack. Now here's the Homespun Christmas stamp set. I've already taken mine out of my packaging, so I have mine in a pocket that's not included in the kit, but I prefer to keep mine in these pockets. And you are also going to get the coordinating dies for the stamp set. I love that Pink and Main does a really good job about having a wide assortment of products in their kits. And often there are coordinating dies for the stamp set. So here's a quick look at everything in the kit. You're going to get that 6 by 8 stamp set with the coordinating dies, a stencil, 6 pre-cut and scored card bases, a full pack of patterned paper, a pack of foil cardstock, sequins, um, enamel dots and it's all going to come in that amazing mesh zipper bag. Now off camera I went ahead and I stamped and I colored all of the images from the homespun Christmas stamp set and I die cut those out with the coordinating dies. I tried my best to keep to the colors of the pattern paper so I really loved that traditional Christmas color and I brought in some brown as a neutral but then you can see here that I also colored a little bit of those teal colors to bring a little bit of a non-traditional feel in. 
Now let's go ahead and get started with my five projects. For the most part, I stuck to the contents of the kit, but I did bring in some shaped dies from my stash. So for this first card here, I'm going to be using some stitched rectangles from Pink and Mate, and this is the Stitched Rectangles 1 set. You can definitely make this card without using those stitched rectangles. You can just cut these rectangles with your uh, paper trimmer, so you don't have to have dies to create the same card. I'm going to be using that those poinsettias that are in that kind of mason jar that says joy, so you don't even need an extra sentiment, just that one stamp, and I've colored that traditionally with that kind of dark red color to those flowers. And this one's going to be a pretty traditional card. I cut three colors of the pattern paper, the green, the red check, and then I also am matting that green paper with a cream colored pattern paper from the Homespun Christmas paper pack. I'm pulling in some twine from my stash. Again, you could definitely skip this step, but I just thought that it added a little bit of something extra, and I thought the card was missing something. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a, a little piece of this twine, and this is just Baker's twine. It's like cream and gold colored. And I'm gonna twist this around three times. I'm using some tape at the back to hold that in place, then twist that around until I have the look that I'm wanting. Then I'm just kind of messing with that string, getting that kind of pulled and evened out a little bit. Then I'll take another piece of tape and secure that at the back. When I adhere this card together, I'm going to make sure that I add adhesive over top of that baker's twine at the back to keep that in place. But for now, you can kind of see how this card is going. I'm going to add some foam tape now behind that uh, matted piece and then add that onto my red checked piece and then also pop up my little potted poinsettias. I'm using those white glitter enamel dots and I'm just going to scatter some of those around here and there to complete the card. I like to go in odd numbers, so I usually group a group of three and then a group of two and that creates a visual triangle and keeps to that odd pattern. The eye likes odd patterns and I, I don't know why. I know there's a psychological reason behind it. I just don't happen to know what it is. <laughs> so I like these, um, the odd numbers. So I'll go three at the bottom left there and then two at the top right and that's going to finish off this first card. Here I am putting this on a card base, which again is included in this Homespun Christmas card kit. All you have to do is just fold that heavyweight cardstock in half. It's already scored, so you don't even have to score it. Fold it in half. I like to reinforce mine with a bone folder, but you could just run your fingernail along that. And then I will secure that card onto the card base, and this is card number one. Let's move on to card number two. I'm going to do a shaker card. Whenever I have a card kit, I like to create a shaker card. I don't know why, I just do. So I need to create a shaker frame. And my favorite way to create a shaker frame is with the reverse scalloped rectangle dies from Pink and Main. Again, you do not have to use these dies. If you have something in your stash that'll work just as well, go ahead and use that. Or you can even use your paper trimmer to cut out a piece of A2 sized cardstock and then cut out a rectangle from the center there. I just think that the reverse scalloped rectangles adds that extra little, they're stitching around the outside and then that scallop is a really pretty detail. I'm using Pink and Main 1 8 inch Easy Tear Tape and I'm going to go all the way around the backside of that reverse scalloped rectangle so that I can add my acetate on top. This Easy Tear Tape is super awesome because it is truly easy to tear and you're going to be able to um, it's, it's going to hold tight, you know it's going to hold tight. So I added my acetate on and then I have some foam tape on my shaker window as well, creating that well so that none of my shaker bits are going to escape. So all four sides of those uh, foam tape, it, they're touching. I used my anti-static powder tool and I went around the inside edges. That's going to remove any excess adhesive that's on the inside of that uh, double thick foam adhesive. That's going to make sure that my shaker bits move around and don't get stuck up against that foam tape. I'm using the sequin mix from the Homespun Christmas kit. Love these colors. Then I'm just going to seal up this shaker with a piece of pattern paper that I cut from the paper pack. And this is cut to A2 sized as well, so it should match up just perfectly with the frame. But if I'm off a little bit, I can just grab a pair of scissors and trim away where I was not quite lined up right. 
And here we go. Here are all those sequins shaking around. And this card is going to be really simple to put together. I'm going to pop those bells up with some foam tape and then also add a sentiment strip from the Homespun Christmas stamp set at the bottom. And I popped that up with foam tape too. It just says season's greeting. And I'm just going to kind of tuck that right below, get that as centered as I can. The good thing is I'm working on acetate. So if I need to pull up that foam tape for the first couple seconds, I can. My bells I thought were a little bit off, but I had stuck that down really good and they weren't going to come up and I didn't want to risk tearing my image so I decided they were straight enough for my project. So there's card number two. I love this shaker card. This is probably one of my favorites that I made today and it was so simple and easy to do. So my third project is actually not a card. I'm going to create a tag because I think Christmas time, Christmas and birthdays are the times that I make tags most often. So I decided to make a tag and I am using the Pink and Main Fancy Tags die set. Again, you don't have to use a fancy tag die. You can even cut a tag shape freehand. I'm not very good at freehand cutting, so I prefer to use dies. I have a piece of white cardstock, bigger than what I actually need it to be, but I'm using the stencil, and I wasn't exactly sure which part of the stencil I wanted to use. I thought I had an idea, because I knew I was gonna use this candy cane, and so I'm just gonna kind of blend over this, and I am using a mini ergonomic blender brush, one that I have dedicated for my brown inks. So I'm going to go over this with that blending brush, just a little bit of this light brown ink, and I think this makes such a pretty background. I loved inking up this stencil that's included in the kit. Again, this is where I was saying you could absolutely mask off just a single portion and create a stunning little detail at the bottom of your card or of your tag, or you can repeat that one pattern. It's really such a fun stencil. So once I had that all lined up and I had figured out which portion I wanted to use, I went ahead and die cut that using the smaller tag shape from the fancy tags dies. I cut a piece of pattern paper from the card or from the kit with that scalloped fancy frame or fancy tag. And I'm gonna layer these two together. You don't have to do this. You can use them individually, but I wanted to have them together. And now I'm just kind of playing around. I knew I wanted to use the candy cane, but I thought it looked a little bit empty. So I thought about adding this other point set it in on the side. And in the end, it was too much. I decided to go with just the candy cane and have a little bit of a clean space on the left-hand side of my tag. I stamped that Merry Christmas from the Homespun Christmas stamp set, and I just cut that out into a simple banner shape. I did not adhere the two tags together. The only thing holding those together is that little bit of twine at the top, and then I foam mounted my candy cane and my sentiment onto that top tag there. And I didn't mount those tags together because this is where I can write on the back. I can write my to and from. I didn't want to mess up my pretty pattern paper that's on the back there. But when you slide this tag to the side, you can write your little to and from on the white space back there. I was so inspired by the stencil on that tag that I wanted to use it again. But I had an idea for a slimline card. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a piece of cardstock, again, something that's a little bit um, taller than what I need. It's about the right width, but it's a little bit taller than what I need so that, again, I can pick out which portion of the stencil I want to use. I'm going to tape my cardstock onto the stencil, just taping from the back. And you can see here that the stencil, if I go this way, is not quite long enough to... Um, to cover the whole card front. That's okay, I'm gonna start blending here and I'm gonna go almost up to the tape but not the whole way because I wanna create a seamless blend. So once I get almost there, I'm gonna be able to lift up my stencil and very carefully lift it up because I don't wanna tear my cardstock and then shift this over to the right, line the stencil up again and then ink blend once again, and that's going to fill in that whole panel off to the right there. The hardest part is lining it up just perfectly so that I don't have any kind of like little blips in my background. I decided to create a simple frame, and for that I used the Blessings Slimline die set from Pink and Main, and all I did was just cut out that outer frame, 
and I'm gonna pop this up with foam tape. You could create a shaker card out of this. It's basically the same, um, I just love these reverse scalloped rectangles. I, I just love them. So you could definitely create a shaker card out of this using the same technique that we used for the second card. But I decided to keep it a little bit more simple and just create this frame. I'm going to use, I use kind of a khaki colored cardstock. So that's my neutral. I always like to have at least one neutral on my card. I think that it helps to break things up. And since I have colored this little lantern candle thing with, uh, I colored it brown, I decided to keep that brown as my neutral for my card as well. I have a Merry Christmas sentiment here, but I ended up switching it for a longer one, for season's greetings. And then I added some of those white glitter enamel shapes around my sentiment, again, keeping that odd number, creating that visual triangle. And I tucked that season's greeting sentiment back behind that little lantern. I just think it's super cute. I do love this one too. Okay, so here's my last card. This one, I'm gonna go a little bit non-traditional. I've been doing traditional colored projects thus far. And so for this one, I'm bringing in the concave rectangles die set. And I'm going to go with a bright green and that pink color combo. I have my stocking colored in that teal color that I used to kind of match the papers in the kit. And as I was laying out some papers and deciding where I wanted to go with this card, I originally had my background using one of those teal colors and it was just too much teal. So I figured why not go with a third color and bring in some of that kind of lime green color. So I cut that to four and a quarter by five and a half inches, standard A2 sized card. Then I cut that pink pattern paper with the die from the concave rectangles die set. And I'm gonna pop that up with foam, hang it off the edge and chop off one of those little corners. Then I foam mounted that adorable little stocking. And I'm just going to have a simple Merry Christmas sentiment coming off of the left hand side of that stocking. I'm just using my T-square ruler to make sure that that's straight and get that all lined up the way I want it. And there we go, I have five projects all done using the Homespun Christmas Card Kit. I'm gonna take you through and look at all five of these projects once again. This one is the first one, a really traditional Christmas card. Here's the second one, bringing in a little bit of the untraditional with the blue around the background, but still I love that classic poinsettia and those bells. And it's a shaker card, what could be more fun? Love this little tag. I use some of that gold foil cardstock from the kit just to give that a little bit of a foiled accent. And then of course, this pretty slim line card where I stretched that stencil going all the way across and then added that pretty frame. And then my last one with the non-traditional color scheme of pink and green. Still kind of keeping to that traditional red and green color, but having a little bit of that fun of these bright pink and green colors. I'd love if you told me in the comment section which one of these cards is your favorite. And remember that this homespun Christmas card kit is separate from your regular Pink and Main kit subscription. So if you are a Crafty Courtyard kit subscriber, you will need to purchase this kit separately. There are limited quantities and they do sell out. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll leave the links to everything I used in this video below in the video description box. And again, thank you all so much for watching. Here on the screen are some other videos that I thought you might like. I'll see you again soon. Bye.